Matthew chapter 22. We're going to begin reading in verse 15. Leading up to where we're going to start reading, Jesus had just given uh, the sermon on uh, the parable of the marriage supper where he, you know, man bid uh, folks to come out to the marriage feast and they began to make excuse. And then he said, go out in the highways and byways and compel them to come in that my house might be full. And, and uh, you know, he just uh, uh, summarized that sermon with, uh, and he saith unto them, friend, how camest thou in hither having not a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Well, Jesus gave this sermon to the Pharisees, and they didn't like it. Uh, he just flat out told them uh, they didn't have a wedding garment on, and they didn't care for it. So let's pick up our reading in verse 15. Then went out the Pharisee, then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians saying, "Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men." Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They said unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. And when they had heard these words, they marveled, and left him, and went their way. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we enjoyed the good songs. Lord, we're thankful for the joy of the Lord. Lord, it propels us through many problems and pitfalls. Lord, we're also thankful that, Lord, even when we don't understand what you're doing or where you are, you still show up and help us in time of need. And now, Father, I pray that you'd bless now the reading of the Word of God. Help us all, Lord, to set in heavenly places tonight. I pray you'd enlighten our minds and our hearts to truth. I pray that, Lord, you'd create a desire in our hearts to live a life that's pleasing unto God. Lord, we certainly pray if there's any amongst us who don't have a wedding garment. Lord, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. And Lord, those that are saved that have a wedding garment, I pray that, Lord, their desires, their garment would be without spot and without wrinkle. And God, help us, Lord, to glorify you. I do pray for Brother Jack. You'd touch him and help him. I pray for Miss Cindy, Miss Mary's brother Ronnie. You'd touch him there in the hospital. I pray for little Avery. Lord, you'd touch that little baby just a, a day old. And Lord, I pray for the baby and mama and daddy. Lord, you'd be with them. Lord, I pray for others that are sick. You'd help them. I pray for those that are traveling. You'd give them traveling mercies. Uh, Lord, thank you for helping Brother Bob. He had a bad night Saturday night, but Lord, here he is. And those that were snowed in, God, we're glad that they're able to be with us tonight. Now, Lord, I pray for the next few minutes, Lord, uh, you'd arrest our attention. I pray that, Lord, you'd uh, uh, glorify your name. You'd use this unworthy vessel and help us from the Word of God. We'll thank you and praise you for it. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. And amen. I want you to draw your attention to several things from these verses. I want you to notice, first of all, the sedition. Look again at verse 15. The Bible says, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk, and they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians. Now, can I say that there is a sedition or a confederacy going on right here? 
the Pharisees had nothing to do with the Herodians. The Herodians uh, 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 obviously were followers of Herod, Herod the Great. But by the time that Matthew 22 comes around, Herod the Great's been dead for about 30 years, uh, and the Herodians uh, believed that Herod the Great was the Messiah. And uh, obviously the Pharisees uh, had big time problems with that, uh, and the Herodians would twist the law of Moses, uh, and of course the uh, Pharisees uh, not only uh, 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 were uh, uh, given to the law, but they made up a bunch of their own. And so these two were oil and water. They did not get along. They did not have any fellowship with one another uh, until it come to finding fault with Jesus. They confederated together to find some way to accuse him. It's kind of like uh, 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 the Democrats and the Republicans. They don't get along at all until you bring up Donald Trump, and they'll, cut, they'll line up and do anything to uh, uh, keep that man from sitting in, in, in the White House. You know why? Because he exposed them. Hmm? Uh, uh, you got some that are, are swamp dwellers. By the way, anything in the swamp, that ain't good. Hmm? Huh? And so you, you got confederacy here against the Lord Jesus. Now I am by no way, shape, or form trying to say that Donald Trump's like the Lord Jesus. Uh, I hope he's saved. He says he's saved. Uh, some things come out of his mouth and what comes out of saved people's mouths. Uh, uh, he's not the Messiah. He's not uh, 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 the greatest hope for America. The greatest hope for America is Jesus. Uh and it don't matter who's in the White House, if the Lord's not allowed to be the Lord in America, America's done. Mm -hmm. But we do see the sedition. We see these two diametrically opposed sects that are come together in order to find fault in Jesus. Not only do we see the sedition, notice the serviles. Look in verse number 16 again. It says that they, the, their disciples and the Herodians came together saying, Master, we know that thou art true. Well, if they knew that he was true, why are they going to try and catch him in something? Hmm? 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 Yeah. Hmm? It's just like Mitch McConnell. He tells all his constituents how he's for us, and then he votes against us. Hmm? Huh? He's a swamp dweller. Anyway, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Well, if that's the case, how come they didn't repent and follow him? Hmm? There's a lot of people, by the way, call themselves Christian. They're not Christian. There's a lot of people who call themselves Baptist, and they're not Baptists. Hmm? Well, that upsets you. Hang on, neighbor. Hmm? It says, Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Well, they're right in all they're saying, but they don't really believe this. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? We see their servileness. In other words, uh, 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 they are trying to catch them. They're using flattery, and they're trying to find some way to find fault in them. There's a lot of people that will pat you on the back and all the while, in the other hand, they got a knife, they're ready to stab you in the back. Hmm? And that's what these jokers are doing to the Lord. Now notice they're scolding. <laughs> Look at verse 18. But Jesus perceived their wickedness. Of course he did. He's God. And he said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Now some of you get a little upset with me when I get a little harsh. You say, Well, you, Brother Doug, you shouldn't call out Jolly Olstein all the time. And you shouldn't say something bad about Joyce Myers. And you shouldn't say something bad about other denominations. You know, well, Jesus called this crowd a bunch of hypocrites. Hmm? Uh, uh, if, if whatever they're doing don't line up with the Bible, they need to be exposed. By the way, Paul said, mark them and avoid them. Hmm? Uh, if we don't expose them, how is anybody going to know that there's anything wrong with them? Hmm? I've, I've heard people say, I've talked about Baptists say, well, I enjoy watching Joe Olsteins because you don't know the Bible. Right. Right. Hmm? Uh, that's true. Well, you ought to study your Bible and you'll find out that he, he's a card. He's a shark. He's not even saved. He even went on TV and admitted he's not a preacher. He's a motivational speaker. 
and he's motivated you to give him money, you're in trouble. Hmm? Uh, he's guilty of filthy lucre, my dear friend. Uh, uh, but anyway, I told you he was going to get upset. We see the scolding. Now notice the synopsis. Jesus is going to use an illustration here. He's going to uh, uh, shut them up. Hallelujah. Hmm? Verse 19, show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto him, Whose is this image and superscription? They said unto him, Caesar. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. You see, they, they want to know if it was lawful to give money to Caesar. Hmm? Well, you don't have to, but you're going to spend some nights in jail. Hmm? Uh, by the way, there's, there's been so-called Christians that said, well, you don't have to pay your taxes because you're a Christian. Well, you don't have to. But the IRS is going to show up, aren't they, aren't they Miss Billy? They're going to get their money. Yes, yeah, she is. Thank God there is one saved IRS agent. I don't know about all the other ones, but we know one is, huh? Uh, you don't have any say in that. And I've heard them say, well, the, they formed the IRS and, and that's taxation without representation. It don't matter. Hmm? They don't even have to prove you guilty to take your house and take all your stuff. All they got to do is get a whiff of it and they can take it. Then you got to prove yourself innocent to get it back. Hmm? By that time... Hmm, Joe Biden spent it on ice cream. <laughs> so they're, they're trying to catch him in something. But notice what the Lord says. He says, show me the penny. They showed him and said, whose picture's on that thing? Caesar. So will you render unto Caesar what's Caesar's? And unto God what's God's? Amen. Now there are some, Brother Phil, because, uh, mm, you know... Mr. IRS gets it right off the top before they ever get their paycheck. Because if they got their paycheck first, Miss Noreen, they wouldn't be cutting Miss Billy a check. Mm -mm. We'd have a whole lot more IRS agents. That's why they get their money first. And because they have to pay taxes, they pay taxes. But when it comes to the Lord, they don't render under God what's God's. Whether or not you realize this, the tithe is God's. Mm-hmm. And if you don't get it, God's going to get it. And he's a whole lot better getting it than the IRS is about getting theirs. Mm. That's why some people got health problems. That's why some people's always got money problems. That's why some people, uh, uh, everything's all the time breaking down. Now listen, you can be right with God and things break down. You can get, be right with God and get sick. You can be right with God and have problems. Uh, uh, it just might be that God's just trying to do a little testing. might be uh, uh, the words that song Miss Sydney sang. Uh, but I guarantee you, if you're a God robber, you're going to have problems in this life. Hmm? You won't have the blessings of God. Huh? But those that are faithful with the things of God, they may f face some things in this life, but you know what they are? They're blessed, blessed, blessed. Hmm? So we see that the Lord gives a synopsis. Now, notice that they go away stumped. Look what happens, verse 22. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Hmm? Huh? Can you imagine trying to outthink God? And yet there are people sitting in the pews every Sunday trying to outthink God, outwit God, outsmart God, outtalk God. Huh? Well, God just did a little bit with a penny, blew their mind, and it stumped them. I'm interested tonight in verse 22. It said, when they'd heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. I want to preach on this little thought tonight. and My throat's a little scratchy, that's why I'm trying to maintain it a little bit so I can get through this. But I want to preach tonight on their way instead of the way. Hmm? says they went their way. Their way instead of the way. Can I say there's a lot of folks doing things their way. There's a lot of saved folks doing things their way. If you're not careful, you'll do things your way. 
I want to do things the way. There's a difference between the way and their way. I want to do things the way. And can I say when it comes to their way, their way is destructive. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. There's a lot of folks that want to live their life their way and think they're going to heaven. Can I say that their way leads to destruction? Uh, 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 hey, uh, 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 just because uh, uh, folks go to church don't mean they're going to heaven. Just because people put money in the plate don't mean they're going to heaven. Just because people invite folks to church don't mean they're going to heaven. Just because people have been baptized don't mean they're going to heaven. Just because people are religious don't mean they're going to heaven. Just because people got a Bible don't mean they're going to heaven. Uh, 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 listen, uh, if you're going your way, you're not going to heaven. Uh, hey, listen, there's a narrow way, uh, there's a straight way, uh, and that way is the only way that leads to heaven. Uh, it's not your way, it's not my way, it's not even the Baptist way. Uh, it's the way God put forth, uh, and only those that are going that way are going to heaven. There's a lot of folks going to wake up one of these days in hell thinking they were going to heaven. Hmm? Listen, I'm not a big proponent of Billy Graham. If you want to know why, see me afterwards. I got a book, 673 pages, tell you a whole lot about Billy Graham. All you got to do with Billy Graham and Joe Olstein, any of them, follow the money. Just follow the money. Uh, uh, let me just put it this way. Uh, uh, you can't carry a Bible in China without being arrested. How did Billy Graham get them printed there? and distributed there. Just follow the money. Just follow the money. huh? That's all I, I got to say about him. I, I, let me say this. Anybody that bows down kiss the Pope's ring, he's not, he's, he's not a saved man. Mm? Uh, listen, you cut my fat lips off my face before I bow down and kiss that sucker's ring. huh? It ain't happening. huh? Listen, I met the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other. huh? He is the Lord of glory. I'm not going to worship a man. But listen, I, I, I'm just trying to help you with something here. Billy Graham did say this in all of his crusades and all of his campaigns and all of his stadiums that he filled and they had people flood to the altars. Uh, he said in all those people that came forward in all those years, he said maybe 2% got born again. Mm hmm there are a lot of people saying, well, I went to a Billy Graham crusade. I wouldn't put stock in that. Mm. Right. By the way, Billy Graham wasn't a Baptist. He was a Presbyterian. Right. And by the way, he wasn't a local church man, but Jesus was. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Jesus isn't in the crusade. He's in the church. Right. Say, preacher, that isn't very popular. I don't really care. God didn't call me to be popular. He called me to preach the word. Hmm. But I'm telling you, their way's destructive. Hmm? Can I say this? Their way's deceptive. The Bible says a lot about them deceiving and being deceived. The Bible says a lot about false prophets and false Christ and false messages and false philosophies and false ways. Uh, listen, uh, anybody that denies that Jesus Christ is the only way, you run from that sucker. That sucker don't know the Lord, huh? Their ways are deceptive. Hmm. How come you got to pay admission to get in to hear Joe Olstein? Hmm. Hmm. Because you got to pay for that big, uh, you know, uh, 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 what is what is what's it called? The big uh, building in downtown Houston? Uh, no, it's. Uh, Oh, uh, the convention center. He bought the Houston, the convention center in downtown Houston, and he's got to pay for it. So you're going to pay ten to fifteen dollars a seat just to get into place. And then they're going to pump his books. You're going to pay for them. And then, he, and he's not even going to shake your hand at the back door on the way out, huh? I just like the money that that globe that spins behind him is worth. Can you imagine what that thing cost, huh? I mean, that's something. Somebody go get that. Well, hock it. Uh, we could probably build that new building for what that thing cost. Uh, they're deceptive. They sound so good. 
And see, they prey on people's misunderstanding of the Bible. Just because they call themselves Christians don't mean they are. Hmm? And yet, so many people just flock to them, believe them, because they, they sound like they know what they're talking about. But yet, they never will crack this Bible and tell you truth. They'll tell you a lot of mistruths. See, their way is destructive. Their way is deceptive. Can I say something? To this? Those that go down their way are always filled with doubts. They just got doubt in their life. They have no true assurance. They have no truth to bind their soul when the storms come. Because storms do come, friend. I've seen people, I mean, say they're saved. And just go through a little speed bump, Brother James. I'm not talking about one of them Acts 27 storms. I'm talking about a speed bump. And their whole world shatters. And I'm thinking, what in the world? If my Jesus wasn't big enough to get me through a speed bump, I'd do some checking up. There's always something missing there. Hmm? Can I say something about their way? Their way is demoralizing. Did you ever watch some of this crowd? I, I, I'm listen. I'm guilty. I, I've got I've got hundreds of channels, and there's never anything on. So I'll catch myself watching a lot of this stuff that calls itself Christian, and I'll listen to some of the things they say, and I'll watch the crowd. And really, the whole time the guy is speaking, and sometimes it's a guy, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I don't know what it is. But the whole time they're speaking, they're literally putting people in bondage. And people don't even know it. If the Son will set you free, you're free indeed. But they're demoralizing. They will put you in bondage and make you thank them on the way out. There's problems with that. Hmm? They'll tell you you're not saved if you don't speak in tongues. I don't even speak English good, let alone any other languages. But see, the problem is they don't know tongues means languages. Mm -hmm. So they put you in bondage because you don't speak in tongues. They'll tell you if, if you don't have the second blessing of the filling of the Spirit of God, then you're, you're a lackluster Christian. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got good news for them. I didn't need the second blessing. I got it all the first time. Uh but they, it's, they're, their way's demoralizing. They're constantly trying to put you in a state to where you feel like you're not good enough. Now listen, none of us are worthy to be saved. And it's not based on my goodness. And hallelujah, when I figured that thing out, it's not based on me, it's based on Him. Uh, and I'm saved because of His goodness, His righteousness, uh, His holiness. Uh, and hey, uh, when I got a hold of the fact that I'm really saved because of what He did, uh, it doesn't demoralize me, it uplifts me, uh, it edifies me, uh, it encourages me, uh, it lets me know as long as He reigns, I'm okay. What a blessing, huh? But oh, their way is demoralizing. Can I say this? Their way is damning. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh-oh. The preacher, I prayed. I've, I've done this. I've done this. Listen on. He says, But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What's God's will? It's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know what repentance is? A change of mind and change of heart. If you haven't had any change in your life, you haven't been repentive. Verse 22 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. A lot of folks trusting their works and what they've done. You better put your faith in what Jesus done. So we see something about their way. I'm interested in the way. Mm -mm. Can I say some things about the way? Can I say, first of all, the way is the right way. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. That's what's wrong with this world. Their way seems right. It seems right that uh, God loves everybody, so if you're a homosexual, God loves you and you're okay. Yeah. It seems right that uh, you can pick your gender uh, and God will love you anyway. Yeah. It seems right uh, 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 that you don't have to do that old archaic religion like Grandma had. Uh, you can serve God however you want to and God will take you because God just loves everywhere, everybody. Uh, 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 their way seems right. Uh, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's not the way. That's not the right way. What's the right way? I'm glad you asked. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's been a while since I used this illustration, but it's true. Zachary, stand up. You see how tall that boy is? In biblical days, Jesus' time, he was a giant. Sit back down. I've seen enough of you. Seth, stand up. That's about the average height of a guy about the time of Jesus' birth, you know. Uh, about a head and shoulders shorter than him. Huh? Now sit back down. I've seen enough of you too. Now they tell me that if you take somebody and you spread out their arms from fingertip to fingertip, if you put them over on the axis, uh, that's really about how tall they are. Their wingspan's about how tall they are. People say, uh, 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 how narrow is the way uh, 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 to heaven? This is how narrow it is. Uh, uh, from Jesus' hand to Jesus' hand that was nailed on the cross, uh, uh, the only way to heaven is through him. Uh, that's how narrow it is. Uh, 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 any other way uh, is a thief and a robber. Uh, 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 if you're trusting in something about as big as Zachary, you're going to miss it, friends. Uh, uh, it's too big. Uh, it's a narrow way. Uh, and Jesus said, I am the way. Uh, uh, the average man uh, 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 back in Jesus' day was about five foot seven, five foot eight uh, high. Uh, that's how much uh, of a narrow way it is. It's about five feet something uh, out of heaven. You got to go through Jesus to get there. Uh, that's the way. And that's the right way. That's the only way. There is no other way. Yeah. I've heard people say, well, there's many roads to heaven. Uh, uh, no, friend, there might be many roads to Cincinnati, uh, but there's only one way to heaven, uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, said, preacher, you're so narrow-minded. I am. I, my mind's about that narrow right there. Uh, that's it. There's only one way, and it's the right way, and his name is Jesus. He's the only way to heaven, friend. Mm -mm. Listen, uh, you say, Brother Doug, you believe only the Baptists are going to heaven? No, I believe a lot of them ain't going. Mm. Listen, I could, fall, I could throw off on every denomination. I've studied them all. I could, I could start telling you what they believe and tell you why it's wrong and all that. But listen, I preach to Baptists all the time, so I just tell you where Baptists are wrong. Baptists are wrong because uh, 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 they've heard it so much and they sat on a church pew uh, and they bought into this ideology. All you got to do is make a decision for Jesus. No, you got to have a change of heart. You got to realize you're a sinner and your sin's going to take you to hell uh, and the only one that'll take you to heaven is Jesus uh, and you got to turn from your sin and turn to him and ask him to save you, friend. Uh, you didn't do that. You're not going. Uh, can I say this about Baptists? You've sat there so long and you've heard stuff like this. Just invite Jesus into your heart. Show me chapter and verse for that. I can show you, well, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is, is, is made. But I can't see anywhere in the Bible that says, Jesus, come into my heart. It's not there. See, you, you, you believed a lie. Hmm. Uh, how many of you have heard this phrase? Let go and let God. That's not biblical. 
Matter of fact, that was made up in an ecumenical movement uh, 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 back uh, uh, in the early 1900s when a bunch of denominations got together and they started using that terminology. Now it's used everywhere. Uh, listen, uh, 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 things that get a hold of me, I don't have a hold of them. I can't let them go. Uh, uh, only the Lord can break those chains. Uh, uh, there are things too big for me. Uh, I can't even hold on to my own salvation. That's why I'm in here. Man, he's got a hold on me. Uh, uh, friends, uh, you can't let it go and let God. You just got to let God, my dear friends. Uh, a lot of people believe in a lot of false things because people have said them and they make sense. Remember, there is a way it seemeth right. Hmm? I've heard people say, the Spirit flows from breast to breast. Show me chapter and verse for that. Mm -mm. No, if... If you're in tune with the one that's inside of you, he just bubbles over. He doesn't flow for somebody. And by the way, I'm not trusting on you to help me with my salvation. I'm trusting on him. Uh, 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 the way is the right way. Can I say this? The way is relative. Hmm? What do you mean by that? It's unchanging. I'm so sick and tired of saying, well, in order to win the young people, we've got to change. Well, what do you do with this verse, Malachi 3, 6? For I am the Lord, I change not. So if he doesn't change, why do we need to change? I'm just going to stick with what he's, he's, he's sanctioned. Hmm? Let me have you something. You don't need a rock band to get young people. You know what need, you need to get young people? You need the love of Jesus and you need Jesus. That'll get young people. Hmm? Uh, you need to have the truth. They want the truth. Listen, these young people, these kids, they know these kids walk around school acting like cats and dogs is wrong. You don't have to explain that to them. They know that. And you know what about these kids? They can pick out a hypocrite a whole lot quicker than adults can. Hmm. Uh, they just want truth. They want to love. They want to hear about Jesus. Mm -hmm. That still works, by the way. See, the way is relative. I'll never forget when Brother Rod brought me that. Man, that's been 15, 20 years ago. Brother Rod brought that flyer. He got it, got it at the house, and, and it had this gal looked real mod and said, it said you, 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 we're not your grandma's church. I got to think, what's wrong with grandma's church? They preached the truth. They stood for something. That you could understand the words to the songs. Uh, hey, people got saved. Uh, revival broke out. Uh, uh, God was glorified. What's wrong with that? I don't need, I don't need many skirts and, and you know all that other junk. I just need Him. See, the way is relative. It has spanned every generation. Do you know the Bible's just as up to date now as when God penned it down? I don't need a new Bible. I just need to live by the one of God. I just need to believe the one of God. Huh? There's so many people so messed up because they're looking for something that's not there. Hmm? By the way, if somebody tells you, well, in the original Greek, note that joker. Nobody's ever seen the originals. They were written on sheepskin. They, they cracked and, and frayed and are gone. They disintegrated. That's why in the Old Testament you had the scribes. They kept recopying the Word of God. And they kept doing that throughout the generations till we got the printing press, my dear friends. Listen, these people are nuts. You know where they learned that stuff? Bible college. You know, most of the stuff you learn at Bible college, you junk it. Hmm? You do. Uh, listen, most of what I learned at Bible college, I never use. You know what I found that I use all the time? The Bible. Uh, you know what they don't teach in the Bible college? They don't teach you how to pray. They don't teach you how to be sensitive and discern the Spirit of God. They don't teach you to put God first in everything. What they teach you to do uh, is to listen to what Dr. So-and-so says, and when you get out, make sure you send all your kids back so they can listen to what he says too. Mm -hmm. I'm more interested in what Jesus says. Uh, Listen, the Bible's still relative. Jesus still relative. The way to salvation still relative. The way of revival still relative. The old time way still works, friend. Hmm? And when the old time way ceases to work, that means we'll be in heaven. Hmm? 
uh, the way is the right way. The way is relative. The way is rewarding. Can I say with the way you have hope? Huh? What a blessing to have assurance. Hope. Hmm? Not only have hope, you have harmony. There's unity among the beloved. There's peace in your soul. You have harmony. Huh? Isn't it amazing these tree huggers want us to become one with the universe? Why don't you become one with God? That's where real harmony is. That's what they really need. Get in tune with Him. That's what a lot of Baptists need to do. Get in tune with the Lord. Mm -mm. Thank God there's harmony. It's rewarding the way. Huh? Can I say the Bible doesn't contradict itself anywhere? No. Nah. All contradiction comes from the devil. Hmm? He's the one that sowed the first bit of doubt in the Word of God. And can I say the Bible just clarifies the Bible? There's harmony. Hmm? Can I say the way, the way is rewarding? You reward with hope, with harmony, with help. Thanks be unto God, there is help available. You look around this world, you think there's no hope and there's no help. Not in the world. Not in Washington. Not in Frankfurt. My hope and my help comes from the Lord. The psalmist said, I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Huh? Huh? Another place that talks about the Lord skipping over the hills. When you're looking under the hills, you'll find him skipping, coming right to you. What a blessing. He's my helper. He lifts my head. He lifts my heart. I bless the Lord. Can I say, we're not only rewarded with hope and harmony and help, but we're rewarded with heaven. I don't go to bed at night fretting over heaven. Hmm? It's secure, and I'm headed that way. Hmm? I don't even know what all God's got for us, neither do you. I mean, it, it, the Bible makes it clear. It, the half hadn't even entered into the heart of man. Uh, it's been a while since I told this illustration. I'll tell this because some of you are pouting. I got on Billy Graham, and that ruined your night right there. Uh, hang around if that ruined your night, huh? True story. This happened several, several years ago, uh, back before St. E became the big conglomerate and the doctor's office network for every year. The doctors would have a, a Christmas party for, the, for all the staff, and uh, they'd rotate who to host it and that sort of thing. And I'll never forget one of the doctors Miss Network for. Um, his father-in-law was a builder, and he just built a new house. And Brother Ray, the cost on this house was $4 million. Cost. Not, not retail, not what it would sell for, cost $4 million. We got there a little early, and he's showing us all this house, and he's, I mean, he's taking, so he's pulling out the drawers in the master bathroom, showing how they were French dovetailed in and everything, and how everything was built. I mean, above the study, when you walked into the study, two big marble pillars, and above the study, there was 24 karat gold leaf uh, 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 border all around it, and he's showing all this stuff off, and he's talking about the furniture. Uh, uh, he had a, a fireplace that came from 17th century England. Uh, it was all hand carved wood. It was beautiful. It was impeccable. He's talking about all this stuff he had imported in and all this. I mean, it's, it's something. In the great room, they had 40 feet mirrors over fireplaces, and there's one on each side of this thing. 40 feet mirrors. And, and we're standing, and I mean, these, these little nurses and stuff, they're scared to even sit on the furniture. They're scared to, you know, set their drink down on, on anything and everything. And, and we're standing there, and of course, Ned had been there for a while by that time, and, you know, now she's been there longer than any of them. But at, at that time, we're just sitting there, and I don't know, I guess I had to look. Because she looks, she says, what is wrong with you? I said, I'm fixing to shout. She said, say what? I said, this won't even be a doghouse in heaven. Huh? Yeah, I don't fret over what God's got for me over there on the other side. I know it's bigger and better than anything. Hey, I've been to the Biltmore house. Huh? That's nothing compared to what God's got prepared for you and I. Uh, hey, uh, over there, it said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, it would have told you. Uh, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go to prepare a place for you, uh, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, I don't know what the mansions are going to look like over there, but honey, you've never seen anything like it. Uh, uh, but the great 
greatest thing. Uh, we're going to be there with him. Uh, he's going to be the light of the city. Uh, he's going to make it all worthwhile. Uh, what a blessing to be with him forevermore. Uh, I never go to bed at night wondering about, oh, am I going to make it? I never go to bed thinking, oh, oh, and I've never, you don't even know this song, but I, I've never, I've never went to bed thinking, oh, I hope God's just got me a cabin in the corner of glory land. That's not scriptural. Uh, uh, there are no cabins over there. Uh, God don't make any junk. Uh, what can I say? What rewarding it is on this side knowing the way and neighbor when we get to the other side it's going to blow our mind even though we got a glorified body with all that God's done for you and I because we had enough sense to put our faith and trust in him and what he said in the Bible huh now let me summarize this whole thing I would said all that just say what I'm about to say now please pay attention this word rubber meets road it's what separates their way and the way. Can I say their way? They are the authority. And they live by their rules. The way, Jesus is the authority. He's the authority. And we live by His rules. Now listen to what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians 6.20 it says, For ye are bought with a price... Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 7, 23. Ye are bought with a price, for be not ye the servants of men. Those that are caught up on their way. And Gamil, Brother Gamil, there are folks that are walking their way and are even saved. But those that are caught up in their way, Brother Clint, they want to make the rules. Doesn't matter what the Bible says. Doesn't matter what the truth is. Doesn't matter what Jesus has said. It's their way. I'm going to do it my way. Now, they don't come out boldly and say that, but they leave that. Well, I'll do what I want to do. The things of God isn't that important to me to do it their way, God's way. I'll do it my way. Now, they think they're doing it the way, but they're not because they're not living according to the Bible. You and I that are saved have been bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Our life is no longer our own. And when you live your way and not in the way, my dear friends, you dishonor the Savior that bought you. And you'll never truly be fulfilled in your Christian life living their way. You got to live the way. I want to live the, the way. He's the authority. He makes the rules. Hmm? There are people get mad at me sometimes because we don't call off service. Huh? Well, Brother Doug, it was Christmas. You should have called off service. I don't live their way. I live the way. There's a difference. Well, Brother Doug, you just need to understand. You know, we've, we've got friends over here we're going to go hang out with them well I don't live their way I live the way anybody ever hear of Jack Hiles Jack Hiles pastored up in Hammond Indiana boasted that he had the largest Sunday school and they ran over 10,000 every Sunday uh, I won't criticize him I always had this this standard or thought in my mind, Miss Marcy, when I build a church that's running 10,000 and I'll criticize what he did wrong. Until then, I'm going to leave my mouth on. I don't know what they did right or wrong. I wasn't there. I did go up there to pastor school for a week to kind of see for myself, come back with some opinions. You want to know them, see me after, after service. But this was Jack Howes who pastored that church for 43. This was his greatest regret. His dad was a drunk. He didn't just drink. He was a drunk. And one time, he got his dad to go to church, and the preacher didn't give an invitation. As far as he knows, his dad died and went to hell. And he regretted and said, as long as he pastored, there would always be an invitation. 
Say, preacher, why do we always have to have an uh, invitation? We can get into the restaurants qu quicker. I don't live by their way. I live by the way. Somebody might need to talk to the Lord. Somebody might need to thank the Lord. And somebody may, might need to come and know the Lord. We're going to have an invitation. Say, preacher, why do you always have to have church? Because the night we call off might be the night that somebody's coming because they've got a track and they want to come hear about Jesus. You see, when we're members of the church, unless we are providentially hindered, we need to be in our place because somebody's eternal destiny may be at stake. Every time we come through those doors, it's life or death. Huh? Now, I know there are times when folks go on vacation. I know there are times when folks are providentially hindered. I know there are times when folks are sick. God understands all that. God understands when you get uh, uh, three feet of snow and the roads are so bad you can't get here. God understands that. But what God doesn't understand is when we choose to live by our rules and their way instead of the way. God never sanctions that or understands that. Say, Brother Doug, you're too hard. I'd rather go to heaven being too hard than being a liberal. Hmm? Just mark it down. Because there, there are souls at stake. There's people's walk with God's at stake. And can I say, Jesus' honor is at stake. And I want to represent Him, not their way. So I ask you tonight, do you live your life their way or the way? See, that crowd, if you go back and read what they said, they said some nice things to Jesus, and they said some truthful things. They just didn't mean it in their heart. Because when they left Brother Clint, they left their way. They didn't follow him in the way. I can show you the madman at Gadara. I can show you a, a, a blind Bartimaeus. They, they continued in the way. The madman at Gadara wanted to get on the boat and go with him. He says, no, go back to your home. What, what did he do? He went back there and told everybody next time Jesus came, they all came out because he changed that man's life. I want to stay in the way, not their way. Now, you hear me and hear me well. The closer we get to the rapture of the church, it's going to be more and more pressure to live their way. There's going to be fewer and fewer and fewer living the way. I want to be one of those faithful few. When the Lord comes, I want to go out in the blaze of glory, and I want to go out right. I don't want to go out their way. Can I say it's easy to compromise? It takes somebody who's godly to stay true. God help us to walk in the way. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get us a song of invitation. Why they're coming. If God spoke to your heart, the altar's open. If you don't know the Lord, we'd love to introduce you to him. You got mad at me come pray for me there'll be a whole lot less gossip if we talk to God about them folks are coming they're picking out a song let's pray Father we sure do love you we're thankful there's a distinction between the ways of God in the ways of men. God, a lot of times our own conscience wants to lead us to ways of men. Help that inner man, the Holy Spirit, to compel us to stay in the way. Now, Father, I pray for somebody here tonight unsaved that tonight be the night of their salvation. I pray, Father, for the children of God Lord, you called a sheep. Sheep's not the smartest animal on the, on the planet. You called a sheep because we have a tendency to follow anything or anyone. You said your sheep know your voice and they follow you. God, help us to always listen for that still small voice of God and to follow thereby. Help us tonight, Lord, to make a stand when we need to make a stand so others can know the way. Lord, we sure do bless you for the way. Lord, I know it's a narrow way, 
but it's the right way. And Lord, there's nothing like that holy highway that leads home. Now, Father, I pray you'd breathe on your people, you'd put a hedge of protection about them. Lord, I pray that, God, you'd use them in these days. Lord, if you don't come back before Sunday, we'll have a new year. Lord, if you bless us with another year, I pray it'd be the greatest year that our church has ever experienced. We'd see many come to Christ. Now, Father, bless. Glorify your name in this invitation. Bless Caesar and the altar. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.